Well, when I heard about the book, it sounded um, like it was going to be unpleasant to read, but like I should read it if it is true, because I feel like if something's really unpleasant but true, um, why shouldn't I read it? Because some people had to experience it. Um, and when I started to read it, I kind of started to regret committing to reading the book because it's really ugly. Uh, my first impression of the story was a lot of complete doubt and you know because it's such this like this fringe kind of topic in this really like heavy CIA sex slave sort of thing it was very you know not believable and hard to believe I got the book started reading it that night and that it was an interesting experience at first I didn't know how to feel about it I was uh, you know oh, this can't be true or should I even be reading this kind of thing you know letting these these kinds of thoughts and actions into my head is that safe um, gross at first scary at times you know obviously when you first hear it through word of mouth there's a certain sense of disbelief and you know um, uh, doubt so you know th no, no question doubt was one of the first things that came to my mind you know, it, what kind of frightened me most about the book was because it was so much so, I mean, it was so dense with um, disturbing things that it was, I almost felt as, the more that I read it, I was becoming a little bit more um, desensitized to the whole thing, and that was a little bit frightening. First of all, I want to thank all of you guys for coming, and uh, this is a great thing for me because I think the goal of this is to interface between Mark and Kathy and like people who normally wouldn't attend one of their conferences or who wouldn't get a chance to otherwise meet them. Um, one of the things about the book is that it's very alienating for a lot of people and it's also outside of the realm of most people's understanding what the world is. And so the idea and intention of the film is to in some ways um, again, make a meeting of the minds or a meeting of the, of the paradigms, if you will. So you've all had a chance to meet Mark and Kathy, but please, you know, don't. I know if you have hard questions, and you know, you need to ask them not just um, for yourselves, but for them, because I think that we will, won't do justice to this process unless you know they're asked questions that challenge, you know, what you may or may not be able to accept about the book. Um, when I was first told of your story, this is before reading the book. The first thought that came to my mind is, if this is true, how are you here to tell this story? And you're still alive. Well, first of all, we have a First Amendment right to express that which we've experienced. The reason I believe we're still alive is a rather complex one. Well, the answer is, to be perfectly candid with you, I had a lot of help from... Uh, people working within the intelligence community, law enforcement, federal, state, as well as some direction, even from some congressmen. That's why we're still alive. The, the term handler, I guess this is more directed to, or to, to both of you. Um, as, as a handler, uh, this person who, or individual, or half-demon sort of person, would inflict control upon your life who is controlling them? The handlers that I had were associated with the CIA, but most of all, my owner in MK Ultra Mind Control was U.S. Senator Robert C. Byrd, and Senator Byrd directed my activities. He's the one who decided who my handlers would be, and he chose different handlers for certain purposes. My first handler, for example, was for trauma. My second handler was primarily for being able to travel throughout the United States and the Caribbean and Mexico, Canada, and the country music industry. So he chose them according to what they could provide. And as a handler, they followed Senator Byrd's orders, but they were already still associated with the CIA. Let's just jump into a totally different subject. But uh, something that wasn't clear to me in the book was um, your public image and Kelly's public image. I'm not real sure on how Kelly would have been perceived except that, that she traveled the country music circuit and was exposed to a lot of people rather than going to school like a normal child. And in my case, my public image was one of someone that was also around the country music industry that was probably some kind of an airhead and people didn't even bother to talk to me for very long. My um, answers were like praise the lord you know with a smile to pretty much everything which would 
it just went nowhere. There's no depth. There was nothing that could even lead into a conversation. So they never would. People wouldn't talk to me any further anyway. They just figured I was just pretty spacey. It, it's very apparent to me that you guys have a, a very close relationship and, and trust for one another and respect for one another. Um, however, to, to play um, devil's advocate, what can you tell me to, to um, convince me that you're not um, you're not her handler now, or you're not using some form of mind control right now in terms of your ability to, to use hypnotism and your and your your um, connection still? With, with CIA operatives or, or people in the know. The easiest way to tell is that we have perceptual differences. And if she were under my control, uh, her perceptions would be my perceptions. Um, uh, a handler says, I'll give you a piece of my mind. And in this case, I gave her her mind back. <laughs> in the very beginning, when I would see her uh, mirroring and matching my um, cliches or my body language or anything else, I, that was quite a task for me to, to change these autogenic response systems within myself um, to what I had seen her exhibit that seemed to be hers. And I was having to mirror and match her uh, original thoughts. And that's enough to drive me nuts after a while. I was so thankful when she fused together and she was her own person. And I'll never forget the day as long as I live. <laughs> Um, just for the past couple of minutes, I've been having waves of sadness and panic because I'm starting to believe your story. You know, I think I believe it now, and it just kind of affects me because if it's true, like, what are we supposed to do? You know, like, what would you like us to do to? Sorry, <laughs> but it's so horrible to know that it could have really happened to you. And what do we do? Like, where do we go? You know, what do you? What would you like us to do leaving here now? All we can do is is raise awareness. Ultimately, and, and knowledge is our only defense against it, so we just let other people know, and it's just going to take a whole, uh, I think, a whole evolutionary process of humanity to stop it from happening to someone else again, because for now, it's still ongoing, and there's more children every day that are being thrust into it, and it has got to stop. Well, actually, I, was kind of, I was having a similar thought before she said it, I want to say, just, um, I think that's what I will take away from it, is just her, her eyes, just the, <sighs> here's my moment, <laughs> no, just the peace that I see within her. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Let me ask, um, well, like, um, but, um, like, what, what, what do you, that piece, like, is it something that you think is uncommon or think it's only compared to what you read? You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, I mean, in compared to what I read, I mean, I can't I'm going to tell you the things I imagine um, in her dealing with it or picking up those pieces or, I mean, obviously she didn't know, but just the kind of person that I would be meeting in those, those preconceptions. So, um, just, I, I was completely thrown for a loop, but in a really wonderful way. It was very real. It was very intense. These two people seem to be extremely coherent and have their not only their story together but their minds together as well. And and it's an extremely validating experience to have them say these things to your face. So it kind of makes me a little pissed, and and also. It's going to be a little hard knowing this story exists and when the right time is to bring it up. Because holding this story back from the public is, is a crime in itself. So I want to spread the word, but again, you have to be careful where and when and who, who you tell this to. And if you're going to have the time to back it up while you're sitting there. Mm -hmm. um, I, I really was already pretty, uh, pretty much already a believer in that sense. So this really more just confirmed it and, and allowed me to feel some more of that of that truth cool. well when I first started reading the book people noticed that I was acting a little different like what's the matter with you because I was uh, preoccupied I think I was uh, sort of shocked that I had read that and the one protective shield that I had was the layer of doubt and I think that's how we function in general in society is like you watch this horrible news story in Bosnia and you're kind of like mm -hmm, you know like don't really want to deal with it and so I had this wave of panic where I was like oh my god I believe this and it just changes everything you know I don't really know what to do, and I don't really want to be alone tonight. Like, it's just one of those things where, okay, so I've had this earth shattering experience.